Hello students, welcome to the next lecture on the linear algebra. Today we will discuss about rank nullity theorem. Myself, Dr. Gar. So this lecture is the continuation of the previous one where we have discussed about the short proof of the rank nullity theorem. So if you want to see the uh, proof of the rank nullity, you can watch on the playlist Mathematics 2, channel name Dr. Harish Gar, where you can find the various videos. So now the objective of this lecture is we will find the various example how we can solve like here. So if you have the transformation given to be like this way, then how you can verify the rank nullity theorem. So I can briefly recall that what is the rank nullity theorem and how we can approach towards this example. Suppose you have the two vector space V and the W, one is called as the core domain and second is called as the domain. Then if you want to collect all those elements from the domain that is a T of V that we call as the range. If you want to collect all those elements of the V that is from the core domain such that the range becomes a zero, then we call as the kernel. So remember that the kernel will always be with the elements of the core domain while the range is the elements of the domain. Then the number of the elements which satisfy this condition is called as the dimension of the range space which is called as the rank of the transformation. However, the dimension of the null space or called as the kernel is called as the nullity of the here. Now based on this rank and the nullity we will define the rank nullity theorem that the sum of them will be nothing but the dimension of the core domain and how you can prove that we will see here for example if I say dimension of the kernel is nothing but my r and the total is my n so definitely the range is as n minus r. How we can solve this we will see with the help of four to five examples in a simple manner. Say here so what uh, uh, is my approach for all of the question we will ap apply the same approach so step number one is we will define the null space. Step number two is we will define the range and then we will calculate its nullity and the rank. So firstly we will try for find the null space. What is the definition of the null space is that is a collection of the, all those elements in the core domain that is the R cube. Any of the element in the R cube is X, Y, Z such that T of V is zero. Now this is my T of V when it becomes a zero when the first component this itself a zero the second component itself zero and the third component now your target is to find what is your target is to find the value of the x from here value of the y or value of the z r now you can see easily from here what is that this is y is equal to z if you substitute y is equal to z here what is the value of the x it is nothing but my minus of 2z and from here itself x is equal to minus of 2z so what you conclude that you have to write x and y in terms of the j. So that's the simple part of this. So we can express this in terms of here. Now we can substitute this value or we can equate them and you will get this r. So we can substitute this value here x, y and j. So x is nothing but my minus of 2j, y is j, z is z and z will be common of here. So it means the first element is my here. So depending upon the value of the z, so if you take z as a 2, then it will be here and so on. So it are the linear combinations. So what are the basis of this? So there is a single element that is called as the basis of the null space. And there is only one element are there, that's a nullity is 1. And in order to verify that, what is the dimension of the v? v is nothing but my code domain, so it's a 3. So nullity is 1, it means our target is to prove rank of the transformation must be 2. If it is 2, then the rank nullity theorem verified. How you find the range space? Step number 2 is we can start from this here. What is the basis of this R cube? This are the standard basis of this. And you, you must remember that what is the definition of the range? That is here for all the elements in the V. In this example, what is the V is my R cube. So I can take the basis are there. It means how you can find that T of V? So I can take that transformation on the both side here. What is the value of this? I can take from here. What is the value of T100? So you can see that it's a 1, it's a 0, it's a 1. So the first value becomes my 101. Similarly, you can find the second and the third. Now, how you find the basis? You can construct the matrix such that the first element is my first row, second element is here and third is there. Now your target is to convert into the row Eklund form are there. What is the meaning of the row Eklund form are there? You may watch the previous lectures otherwise your target is to become the this and this elements as a zero. 
how you make them this element as a zero you can operate r2 minus of 2 r1 once you will operate here then your target becomes this as a zero you can write as a r3 plus r2 now how many number of the non zero rows are there there are the two number of the non zero rows so these are the basis of the null space so that is a 1 0 1 and 0 1 minus 2 and the rank is my this is there are the two elements so rank is my 2 so therefore you can easily see that rank of that is my 2 nullity we already proved that one so this is a one which is nothing but dimension of the r2 hence the rank nullity theorem variable now we will apply the same approach to all these examples so let's say start uh, how you can find the nullity we will start from the definition since my domain is core domain is my r2 so i can take the two elements x comma y such that here so what is the meaning of that is it means this becomes a zero that is here is zero this is zero and this is zero so from here your target y is equal to zero if you substitute here it means x is also zero so your target your you will get as a x zero y zero substitute this value here you will get zero zero so what is the meaning of that that is a that's a zero matrix so it means the dimension is my zero because there is no elements r here now if the uh, nullity is zero now how you find the ranges so this is my r square what is the standard basis of the r2 is this one apply the transformation on the both side so what is the value of this t of 1 comma 0 so you can see that t of 1 comma 0 is here now construct the matrix a such that the first basis here and try to convert them into the row reduced echelon form that is your target is to make this value as a 0 so you can operate them as a r2 minus r1 now which is actual form so number of the non-zero rows are my 2 that form a basis so now you can see it's a 2 it's a 0 so what is the dimension of the v v is my code domain what is the dimension of the r square that is nothing but 2 so you can see the addition of them will be satisfied look at the another one are there now this is the matrix are there so it is here again we will start from the null space take any of the elements from the domain so since it's a v this is code domain and it's a 2 cross 2 so any of the elements are here now apply the definition p of a is 0 p of a is nothing but my p of a p is given to be here so we can apply the definition p of a is 0 now you can multiply them when the matrix will be 0 it means this value must be 0 this value must be 0 and so on and so from here we will get as a is equal to c from here we will get as a b is equal to d so we can substitute a as c here b as d now there are the two independent vectors so i can write this value as of c i can take an as here so there are the two different matrix so these are my basis and the nullity are my two how you find the range so it's a two cross two so we can start from the standard basis these are the matrix are there now we can apply that transformation here how you find that t of e1 by uh, remember that what is the definition of here is p of a so therefore what is the value of that t of e1 it is nothing but my p of e1 and so on so our target is to find this so p is given to you here e e1 is nothing but my here now you can multiply them you will get this as the answer similarly you can see this is my p this is my e2 once you multiply them you will get these answers after now you can write this matrix corresponding to this how you can write that you can simply write the first element as 1 0 minus 2 0 that is 1 0 minus 2 0 or or you can write like this way also 1 minus 2 0 0 you have to preserve the one order so if you want to write like this way then the second matrix will be 0 0 1 0 0 1 minus 2 if you want to write like this way then for this you have to write 0 1 0 minus 2 so that's depending upon you so i have write as a first second third and so now again your target is to convert them into the actual form so this becomes a zero your target you can write like this way so how many number of the non-zero rows are there there are the two number of non-zero rows so these are my ranges so what is the rank of that e how many unknown how many non-zero rows are there that's a two so that is my so dimension of the nullity we already calculated verify the rank nullity theorem for here again that's a very simple we can take the elements from the r cube core domain such that here it means this value must be zero this first element zero second element zero 
third element zero. So from here we can compute y as minus of z. From here I can substitute y as minus z here. I can substitute y is equal to minus z here. So what is the value of this? This is my 3z. Now from here we can get x as a 3z, y as a minus of z. So I can substitute all these values here x. So I can take z as a common. So which is of uh, so this is a single one elements are there. So the dimension is my one. How you find the range are there? We can take the elements basis of the R cube. We can take that transformation. And what is the value of the t one zero zero here? We can write the matrix A. Now you have to target is to convert them into the Ackland form. That is your target is to become this as a zero, this as a zero. Now you can see this is a, which is the excellent form. How many number of the non-zero rows are there? There are the two non-zero rows, so it's my two. So nullity we already compute them in the previous slide. That's a one. Here is my two, so one plus two is dimension of the R cube. That's a result is well. So this is the way you can solve this rank nullity theorem in a very simple manner. We will solve see under some other lectures in the next videos. Till then, you can simply follow this playlist, Mathematics Two channel name Dr. Harishkar, where you can find the vector space, direct sum, uh, proof of the rank nullity theorem, range space, linear transformation, basis and dimension, and so on. All you can find through the channel name Dr. Harishkar. Till then, best of luck, students. Happy learning.